Hello there, everybody. Welcome back to Ross and Wizzy's Fan Fiction Power Hour. I'm your host, Ross Pitt, Shark Hunter. And today, Wizzy's also here as well. Sorry, guys. Ross got into the Drano. A little bit tipsy. That's a fact. So to say, we're going to be reading two fan fictions. The first one is called Sunset Shimmer is Perfect by Drakey C. Thanks, Drakey C. Thank you for um, making something that is just a fact. Thank you for stating your opinions on the website and making them known. Um, your opinion is valued subjective and is completely objective in every way as you all probably know i actually some of you probably don't know so i'm i'm quite a sunset shimmer fan she is the uh best out of everyone ever <laughs> of all time so this is just great she's she's a good character but let's face it She's a bully. No. She was a bully. Once a bully, always a bully. No one changes. No. That's not true, Wizzy. Look at me. I once bullied you so much. Now you only do it on the weekends. It's fun. <laughs> All Happy right. Saturday, Wizzy. Happy Saturday. <laughs> Alright, time to get into Sunset Shimmer is Perfect. Thanks for agreeing to let me join you for the day, Sunset. Twilight smiled at her friend as they walked down the halls of Canterlot High. Sunset smiled back. No problem, Twilight. You never really got the high school experience the first time you were here. Mm -hmm. I'm all ready to take notes on how my experience differs from, ex from equestrian schools. Twilight held okay, up a... Okay, so there was just a massive, like, thunder crash out. So hopefully my... Oh! Uh, everything doesn't go out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Um. Well, hopefully it just has ambiance, like that other uh, recording that we had. Uh, what was that? Uh, you remember the horror episode that we did? Uh, Eyes in the Trees, Bodies in the Leaves? And, uh, oh, yeah. It was like... <laughs> Well, it's not Halloween, but we're going to do horror because it's a stormy night. Ah, uh, man, that was great. That was great. That was the one with Chase. Yeah. Go watch that episode. Get, listen to that episode, guys. Ah, uh, you so slipped good. up. You were no better than me. <laughs> you said watch. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. Twilight held up a notepad and pen and grinned. Sunset just rolled her eyes as they reached her locker. The one you should really thank is Principal Celestia for authorizing this. Sunset said. You may actually want to consider paying attention to the classes, too. Could learn about this world. Sunset's... Apparently it's, um, Pony Twilight. Oh, this is... Po oh, yeah, that's why she said Equestria, of course. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I just so... now put that together. I'm it... smart. Is this still Bully Sunset, though? Because she's sounding kind of mean. She's like, you may actually want to consider paying attention to the classes. Like, is she trying to be mean? Or is she trying to be nice? I don't know. <laughs> Guess we'll see. Sunset spun the dial on her lock as she spoke. We have libraries for that, Twilight said with stars in her eyes. Sunset pulled her locker door open, and a small pile of envelopes and folded papers fell to her feet. She looked down and frowned. Small holiday. Sunset? Twilight knelt and looked at the papers. Is everything okay? It's nothing. Sunset began to pick them up. I usually get at least two dozen of them every morning, and as many at the end of the day. What are they? Sunset held one envelope out to Twilight. See for yourself. Twilight opened the envelope and pulled out the letter inside. Sunset Shimmer, even in my wildest dreams, I cannot imagine a woman as beautiful or kind as you. If you were my girlfriend, I would shower you with the adoration you deserve? Twilight blushed furiously. Sunset, are these all love letters? Some of them. Sunset shrugged and held out one piece of paper that had been ripped from a notebook. 
This one just says, meet me in the third floor janitor's closet at lunch for the best time of your life. Oh, oh there's a high yeah. school, right? <laughs> yep. Oh, I hate it. I hate it. Twilight choked and coughed. Are they all from the same person? Sunset shook her head. A few of them are from girls. Aww. Bye. 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 Sunset. Bunset. Bunset. There we go. I, I made the pun. She held out a folded piece of paper to Twilight. Twilight cautiously took the paper and unfolded it. Oh, this is still me. This is you, man. I thought this was going to be Sunset reading this time for some reason. Dear Sunset, I am totally straight, but I would go gay for you in a heartbeat. If you ever come out, please call me. Five two five. Twilight blinked. Wow. Here's a charmer. Sunset rolled her eyes and looked at another note. Dear Sunset, you are the most bootylicious girl in the school. <laughs> I heard you used to be a horse. That's cool, because I wouldn't mind saddling up and taking you for it. Oh, oh God. <laughs> Poor Sunset. Sunset! Twilight snatched the note from her hands. Not in public. Sunset shrugged. Sorry. Oopsie. Oops. Twilight watched as she gathered the letters into a pile. You don't seem bothered by it. I'm used to it. Get these all the time. Sunset pulled a plastic bag from her locker and began to load the letters into it. Be my girlfriend. Be my lover. Be my wife. I want you to have my children. I can't have children, but I'd like to have yours. <laughs> After a while, it kind of loses its impact. I guess. Twilight frowned. Sunset stood up with the bag of letters under her arm. What do you do with those? Recycle them. At least it gets reused. We'll swing it by the bins by the newspaper office and then go to class. I mean, you know, I've been thinking, Wizzy. Since she's just actively talking to Twilight, it's very clear from the start that she's not bully Sunset anymore. That is true, especially horse Twilight. But yeah, she still has some sass. You know, she she yeah. she, she, she still got a spicy side in this fic. That's why we love her. Yeah. Uh, you want to be Miss Harshwin? Or Harshwin? I don't know where I, I was reading it like Herschel. Ah, uh, good old Miss Herschel. Now that everyone is seated, we can begin. <laughs> nice voice. Thank you. Sounds like quite a harsh whinny. Miss Harshwinny stood up and walked towards the students. This midterm is worth 20% of your final mark. So doing well on it is your chance to patch up a failing grade. There are 50 multiple choice questions and 10 short answer. You have 60 minutes to finish the test. Any questions not answered will be a zero. She began to walk down the rows, setting the tests face down in front of the students. Sitting next to Sunset, Twilight looked over at her. Are you sure I should be here? I don't want to distract you while you're trying to focus on a test. She gasped. <laughs> that was a bad gasp. What if you I fail because of me? Sunset shrugged. Up to you. I'll be fine, though. Twilight shuffled in her seat, but remained. Miss Harshwinny continued to pass out tests and put one on Sunset's desk. When she reached the front of the room, she sat down. Upon completing your test, please place it face down on your desk and be seated quietly. You may study or use your phones in non-disruptive ways if you wish. I advise double-checking your answers. She reached to her watch and pressed a button on it. Your 60 minutes have begun. The students turned their tests over and began to read the questions. Twilight leaned over in her seat to look at Twi to look at Sunset's test. Which war begun in the 1700s became known as... Twilight stopped as she saw Sunset's hand move and turned her attention to her friend. Sunset's eyes sat on the paper, quickly moved her hand down the page pausing at each question for only a few seconds before circling one of the choices and moving to the next. When she reached the bottom of the page, she folded it to the back to go to the next. Oh man, I just forgot, Wizzy. Guys, you should go read this fic by yourself. And in fact, the other one too that we're going to be reading. 
or at the very least give them a like that would be cool both linked in the description twilight leaned over to whisper sunset shouldn't you actually read the questions i am sunset continued to swiftly mark down her answers and move to the third page but twilight furrowed her brow are you sure those are the right answers sunset rolled her eyes no sparky i'm checking the wrong ones ah very strategic sunset's trying to fail sunset knows what she's doing she's the best after all she has a plan it's gonna work out and you just watch sunset finished her current page and moved to the next twilight didn't even have time to read the first question before they were all answered and sunset flipped to the next page the short answer questions. She barely read them any longer than the minute... Oh God, I cannot read tonight. Get your reading glasses. Right? She barely read them any longer than the multiple choice before she began writing out her answers. Twilight looked up at the clock. Barely five minutes had passed since Sunset flipped over her test. There. Sunset finished her last short answer and set her pencil down. She leaned back in her chair and stretched her arms to the floor. <sighs> um, Sunset? Twilight leaned in. Shouldn't you double-check your answers? Why? It won't be any more correct the second time. Sunset reached into her pocket and pulled out her phone and a pair of earbuds. Oh, she's awesome. This is definitely written by a Sunset fan. How can you be sure they're right? Because I know so. Because she studied Twilight. Unlike a certain purple unicorn here. Got her. No wings yet. Sunset shrugged and put the earbuds in. Twilight frowned. Actually, she as... does have the wings. Oh, uh, does she? So she's not a unicorn? Yeah, I just kind of fucked up on that one, I'll be honest. <laughs> Sunset shrugged and put the earbuds in. Twilight frowned as Sunset put some song on her phone and closed her eyes, bobbing her head to the lyrics. She picked up Sunset's test and quietly walked to the front of the room. Excuse me? She stood in front of Miss Harshwinny's desk. Ah, oh, Miss Barkle. Miss Harshwinny sniffed. <laughs> yes? Could you please grade Sunset's test? Tests will be graded and handed out tomorrow. Please, for me? Twilight held out the test. I refuse to accept she finished this early without getting at least a few wrong. Miss Harshwinny huffed out, but took the test and flipped through it. Well, at a glance, and without issuing a formal grade, it appears she did indeed get every answer correct, at least as far as multiple choice goes, though I cannot say I share your surprise. Why? Is the test not hard? To the contrary. She does not believe in Sunset at all, does she? <laughs> no. She's like, there has to be a reason she got it right. She can't just be smart. Twilight doesn't understand that it isn't her natural talent that got her as far as she did. It was Celestia's teachings. That is very true. To the contrary. It's a midterm, after all. But Sunset has a tendency to speedily complete all exams and tests given to her with perfect scores. Miss Harsh when he frowned. I can only recall one test in memory where she did not get a perfect score due to a single erroneous answer. Aha! Twilight smiled in triumph, just gleeful at her friend's failure, looking for any flaw to pick apart. But she then wrote a handwritten essay on lined paper and handed it in with the test explaining why the answer's correctness was based on the personal biases of historical figures whose reputations have been called into question by recent discoveries. Taking such things into account, she argued, it is highly likely that my marking sheet is outdated and that in light of this new evidence, it is more probable that her answer is the correct one. Man, Sunset really just getting these racist tests updated. Perfect as she is. Just perfect, she can't even be racist. Miss Harsh, when he tilted her head right. Right or wrong on that point, her arguments showed a strong understanding of the subject matter, so I gave her a bonus mark. 
She scored a 40 out of 40 all the same. Twilight's jaw dropped, and she slowly turned to stare at Sunset. Sunset caught her gaze and gave her a wink as she listened to her phone. <laughs> I ship it. I refuse to accept that. Surrounded by her human friends in the lunchroom, Twilight shook her head. There is no way Sunset has gotten perfect on every single test she has ever taken. It's true. Applejack held up her hands. We don't know how she does it. I've never seen her study much. I just have a knack for learning, I guess. Sunset shook her head. Not a big deal. It is so a big deal! Twilight slammed her hands on the table. Do you know how statistically impossible it is for you to not get a single test question wrong in the three plus years you've been here? Well, the odds are one in five hundred six thousand and forty-five. <laughs> Sunset smiled sheepishly. I sat down and calculated it when I had uh, 57 minutes left on my math exam last month. Oh my god. Twilight grunted angrily. Let's hear it. Let's hear the grunt. Come on now, boy. <laughs> there we go. And that is Twilight's angry grunt. It's something you get used to, Fluttershy said. I never really much paid attention when she was mean, but Sunset is sort of, well, perfect. Twilight groaned. Give me a break. It's true, darling. Rarity waved a, hint, a hand in the air. I've gone dress shopping with her. This girl can make any dress work. Anything. I even purposefully picked out the worst dresses in the store. I knew it. <laughs> Sunset muttered under her breath. And she still looked gorgeous. I took her to the spa afterwards, and they kept thinking she was just leaving. Rarity sighed and gave Sunset a longing look. My quietly seething jealousy knows no bounds. I'd kill for hair with that kind of volume. Same. God, everyone just loves Sunset here. But like, yeah. reluctantly. Like, why can't any of them just, you know, be happy for her? You think you've got it bad. Rainbow Dash scoffed. She joined the soccer team last month and she's already our star player. Sunset held up a hand. That's really an exaggeration, Dash. What about our big win against Manhattan Secondary last week? It wasn't that big a win. She's so humble. So humble. We won 56 to 1, and I think that one point was a pity penalty from the ref. It was a team effort. The team was all sick. You played alone. <laughs> Why? <laughs> How did they let her do this? When you're perfect, you could do anything. Yeah, I doubt the team was actually sick. I think they were just sick of playing with her. They cheered me on and gave me emotional support. It made a big difference. Pinky patted Sunset on the head. Smart, pretty, athletic, she plays guitar, and she's humble. Yep, just about perfect. <laughs> Stop saying that. Sunset gently brushed her arm away. I'm not perfect. Really? Rainbow crossed her arms. Name one flaw you have. Easy. I... Sunset paused. I... Well, I got over that. <laughs> Don't do that anymore. I've been told that's kind of endearing, so no... She scrunched her face. Give me a second here. Applejack shook her head. Sunset, we're trying to give you a compliment. I got it. Sunset held up a hand and smiled. I'm stubborn. Rainbow snorted. No, you're not. Sunset blinked and lowered her hand. I'm not? No, because if you were, you would have argued that. Sunset groaned. Right. Ugh. She could be stubborn on some stuff. You don't know. Rainbow nodded. See? You're kind. You're reasonable. You're brave. Everyone loves you. No, they don't. No? Hey, Twa, watch this. Applejack pulled a pen from her pocket and wrote something down on a napkin. Sunset, read this out loud for me. She held it out. Sunset took the napkin, read it over, and said very stiffly, Oh no, I'm low on lunch money. Can anyone lend me a dollar? With a rush of footsteps and the squeak of chairs, suddenly 
Several dozen arms were stretched towards the table, <laughs> bills of various denominations in their hands. <laughs> the girls grew quiet as Sunset awkwardly looked around. Um, never mind. I'm okay. Everyone with bills looked crestfallen, turned, and went back to their tables. However, one boy kept his hand held out. Please take my money. No thanks, I'm good. Just touch it then! Ew, no. <laughs> he whimpered and walked away. I thought he was gay, Rainbow mused. Rarity nodded. See you, Twilight. You could be gay and still do that. Like, I would do that to Sunset, right? I want her to take my money. I mean, yeah, who wouldn't? Applejack shrugged. Everyone loves Sunset. And why not? Pinky grinned. She's everything worth loving. That's so true. She's not perfect! Twilight snapped. Then you name a character flaw. Rainbow challenged. Yeah, um, Twilight. Go on, do okay. it. Okay. Twilight began to think over her interactions with Sunset since her reformation. She... she can be a little... Twilight, please say something. Sunset pleaded. I'm not liking this any more than you. I'm trying! Twilight hissed. She looked Sunset over. You're very... very... well, a little... sometimes you are kind of sarcastic. Everyone else at the table, save for them, laughed. Ha! Ha, 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 ha. Yeah, right! Rainbow snickered. Sarcasm is just being funny, Twilight. So Sunny's got a sense of humor. Not only that, Twilight replied. She's also... Er, she grunted and slapped a hand to her face. You can be a bit clumsy, Sunset raised an eyebrow. Clumsy? That's the best you can come up with. I was panicking. She's it's not... not Back off, oh, I thought that pal. Was, I thought it said rainbow. That's my. I thought it said rainbow. It didn't say rainbow. Why would it say rainbow? It's Rarity saying this. That is true. She's not clumsy at all, Rarity said. Besides, even if she were, I've been told many times that a little bit of clumsiness can be very endearing. It makes one seem vulnerable. <laughs> even her flaws are strengths, Pinky said brightly. Twilight... Did some sort of brainwashing equestrian magical being come through the portal recently? Sunset asked. Twilight's eyes widened. She stood up and grabbed Sunset by the arm. Twilight? Yes, that must be it. Twilight pulled Sunset through the halls of the school. There is some sort of magic at work here. So let's go back to Equestria, save from it, and find out what's affecting them? Sunset asked, coming forward to walk with her. Not them. You! Twilight narrowed her eyes. Something is augmenting your abilities, your appearance. There's no way one single human can be this athletic, intelligent, beautiful, and musically gifted, and they are not using magic to enhance their skills. Okay, maybe that's a little... Wait, what was that third one? Just come with me! What was that third one, huh, Twilight? Mm, Twilight. They reached the entrance to the school and stepped up to the portal. Sunset paused in front of it. Wait, Twilight. She bit her lip. I'm not sure this is a good idea. I haven't been to Equestria in months. I thought, if I ever went back, it'd be with an army, maybe. Yeah, yeah, let's go, little Miss Perfect. Sunset Whoa. cried out as Twilight shoved her through the portal. Twilight stepped through the portal, the familiar sense of space-time distortion washing over her. When she opened her eyes, she was back in her library. Good. Now that I have magic, this will be easy to figure out. She turned back to Sunset. Sunset groaned and climbed to her hooves, stumbling. Whoa, not used to having hooves after so long. How did she react when she first got legs? Did they actually uh, incorporate that? Um, no, I mean, they, 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 they did with Twilight, but we never saw when she got first legs, so. No. Oh, I thought that was how it started. It was like, it shows her jumping through the portal and then, uh going to Equestria, and then Twilight's like, come on, we gotta go after her. Oh, well, yeah, but that's not when she went in, like, for the first time. She was there for a few years. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah. I thought it was just started with her being like, I don't like you anymore, Celestia, and then she goes into the portal for the first time. I mean, that is technically what happens, but, like, 
a few years pass after that. Okay. And then the show happens. She looked up and saw Twilight staring. Twilight? Sunset cocked her head. Twilight slowly raised a hoof to point just past Twilight. <laughs> Twilight slowly raised a hoof to point just past Sunset. Sunset turned her head. Hey! A large orange wing poked out of Sunset's side. She looked to the other side to see its twin and flexed them back and forth. Um, okay, that's weird. She circled around to examine herself. Aw, oh, Sunset chasing her tail would be adorable. <laughs> Maybe I really am under some sort of augmentation spell. As she turned away, Twilight felt her eyes wander. Now that she's a pony again, Sunset is kind of... Twilight glanced down at her friend's flank. Oh my. Not kind of. Really? Her eyes widened. Oh, for the love of Celestia! You're right, Twilight. Something is wrong. What sort of spell did you have in mind to examine me? Sunset looked back and noticed Twilight approaching the door. Twilight? I'm going to bed! It's not even one in the afternoon. I know what time it is! And that's the end. <laughs> <laughs> so is she becoming a uh, freaking alicorn? Yep. Oh my god. That's just how perfect Sunset is. And frankly, it's just true. So she like became an alicorn as a human, but only as a pony would it actually show? I wonder how that would yes. work. And, well, actually, no. As a human, it would show because they have the magic stuff. And their wings show when they have the magic stuff. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, so, yeah, there we Maybe go. Maybe it was uh, only after realizing she was perfect that she got to be an alicorn. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps. You must realize uh... your own limits first. What limits, <laughs> exactly? Sunset Shimmer really is Superman. <laughs> so, what'd we think of it? Well, you know, this story is like one of the funniest that we've read in a while, I gotta say. Quite possibly. This guy, whoever wrote this, they just got really, really good humor. They're really good at their timing and incorporating jokes into their story with everything. It's hard to tell yeah. what was intentional from the beginning and what they just like sort of went along as they uh, wrote it with. Yeah, I thought it was, and I, I might be a bit biased because as a concept, it, it speaks to me a bit. <laughs> uh, but I thought that this was really funny. And yeah. Um, I really like it when stories speak the truth, so no, I'm going to stop saying that Sunset is actually perfect now, because we have another story to read. Okay, okay, now we gotta go to Best Hell Ever by Rambling Writer. That's a nice name. Best Hell Ever? No, Rambling Writer, please. Oh. Best Hell Ever, that's a terrible name. You know how I feel about hell and Satan and demon worship? You love it? I think it's icky. Oh, I thought all atheists love that sort of thing. Oh, weird. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. To all you guys, atheists kidding. out there, I swear, because you I'm know kidding. there's a lot of them in the My Little Pony <laughs> fandom. All right. The ground was cold and hard beneath Twilight's hooves. Hold up, hold up, hold up. You're not even going to read the title of the chapter? I'm sorry. I missed that. 11 to 14 minutes. The ground was cold and hard beneath Twilight's hooves. A oh, I see stone. what's going on. You're reading it from the reader view. Oh, is that wrong? Yes, that's wrong. Oh, that's the name of it. Yeah. Oh, I see now. That's just telling me the time. Oh, I'm so silly. Yeah, you're silly. All right, let me start over. The celestial bureaucracy needs better clerks. And now you may enter reader view. Yeah. <laughs> the ground was cold and hard beneath Twilight's hooves, like polished stone. She couldn't remember how she'd gotten here. Her last memories were of being at a dinner party with Spike and Starlight, talking about a recent changeling rally in Canterlot. One second she'd been there, and the next she was here, with no magic or anything. So where was here? Welcome to hell. That's what the sign sounds like. <laughs> that wasn't a good sign. Twilight looked up. She was in some kind of reading room, with small tables meant for holding books and papers. The walls were lined with shelves and shelves and shelves of books and books and books. She was in a library, yay, hopefully, of some kind. 
only bigger than any library she had ever seen before. The aisles leading out from the room stretched out in all directions before disappearing into the distance, and even the ceiling above her seemed miles away. Standing in front of her was a demon, a vaguely equine shape, and yet, at the same time, not at all, composed more of a stony shadow than flesh and bone and blood. Its voice was deep, with the rumble of two ships slamming into each other. I guess I'll be Twilight for this one, you guys. Yeah, I know it's a bit inconsistent, to. but we did we did say that these were two different stories. He's got to do the same voice, then they'll get it. This is hell, is it? Twilight said cautiously. Her personal hell was a library? What was the catch? The demon ran a tongue over needle-like teeth. Indeed, you will experience personalized torments for the rest of eternity here, which clashed immensely with what Twilight was seeing. So where are we? This is the Library of Babel, said the demon, still in that voice that might have been horrifying if it hadn't been telling Twilight the most amazing things. It contains every book that has ever been written, every book that will ever be written, every book that has never been written, and every book that will never be written. Okay. Twilight was still waiting for that one little qualifier that would make it terrible. This was hell. Why was she in hell, anyway? There had to be something bad involved. As you can imagine, the demon said. The sheer amount of knowledge contained within these walls is not organized or conductive to searching. It smiled. And that's where you come in. Twilight got it and perked up. Uh, wait, you're saying I get to organize these books, every book possible, for all eternity? That was the catch. That didn't seem particularly hellish. Worst catch ever. Would that be best catch ever? Mm, these are the questions. The demon cackled a cackle of granite slabs scraping against each other. Let's hear it, Wizzy. Oh my god, you actually... Okay, fine, I'm gonna grind Let's my teeth it. into the microphone. You wanna hear that? You wanna hear Let's that? Let's hear it. Let's hear okay. it. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Love it. That was the worst cackle I could do. Oh yes, every book... Enjoy your stay. You'll be here for a while. It vanished in a puff of smoke and stench of rotten eggs. Twilight looked up at the shelves, reaching the ceiling. Twilight looked up. Twilight looked up at the <laughs> shelves, reaching to the ceiling high above. A library of every book ever and every book never, and she got to organize them. In fact, there hadn't been any restrictions on reading the books. What kind of hell was this? This would be easy. And if she had a quill and paper to work out a system, it'd also be quick. In the grand scheme of affinity, anyway. She quickly started surveying the tables, and... Aha! Right there was a quill and an inkwell, and a stack of paper for infernal beings to take notes. For infernal beings. Perfect. Twilight quickly tested the quill. It'd be just like hell for her to have a quill but no ink. She turned out to be right and wrong. The inkwell had no ink, but it did have blood. Twilight wrinkled her nose. The smell was going to be terrible soon, but that was the worst thing she'd experienced so far, and it wasn't that bad. Twilight quickly began working out a system in the best hell she'd ever been in. Okay, so, like, this is definitely biblical hell. Is it Jewish biblical hell or Christian biblical hell? Hmm. And which sect of Christianity and Judaism, you know? Yeah. These are the Wildly questions we need to hell. ask. Come on. like give, You didn't put your religion in the description. How are you supposed to know which version of hell this is? Ah, uh, Mr. Saturnary, sir? Yes, well, I'm winning. We've got a problem. You know how I sent a soul to organize one of the libraries of Babel a while back? Sure. Standard punishment for... She did it. <laughs> Come again? She did it. She organized the library. The whole... Yes, the whole thing! You think I'd be here if she hadn't organized the whole thing? <laughs> That's not possible. The library is infinite. Look, don't ask me how she did it, but she did it. 
I walked through just to be sure, and it's all perfectly organized. I asked her how she did it, and she said she had a system. Then she asked if I wanted to see it, and before I could say no thank you, she was shoving this scroll into my hands. I took a look at it and, well, see for yourself. Wow, this is really clever. She's even got the permutations of books properly separated. And yes, I tried disrupting her system, throwing it back into chaos, but it's like she's psychic. The moment I leave, she runs past me, apologizing because there's a disturbance in the folio or something. I go back and the books are organized again. I once tried to disorganize them while she was watching and she hissed at me. <laughs> you were scared of a pony hissing at you. Hey, ponies... Those things can be terrifying. They're strong. Mm-hmm. You didn't see her. You didn't make Beelzebuck run for the hills. I love that name, <laughs> Beelzebuck. Nice. <clears throat> right. Look, one way or another, what are we going to do? Now that she's organized the library, she's just sitting around and reading books. And not just as a way to pass the time, sir. I, I think she's having fun. That's how I react when I see someone reading a book as well. I'll send someone over to you to help look into it. Make it quick. We don't want to sully Hell's reputation into one of rainbows and butterflies and flowers. Except when the person involved hates rainbows and butterflies and flowers. <laughs> but you know how rare those are. Oh my god. I don't Why actually like... know if that voice was like understandable over my recording. Um... Oh, it's perfectly understandable uh, over Discord, so it better be from your recording. Okay, cool. Twilight trotted over to a table and laid the book she had found on it. According to her system, this was the ultimate Drost novel, and she wanted to test that. What is D-R-O-S-T-E? Drost? Droste. Droste. I don't know, I don't know what that word is. Or that the person? taste of know. real Dutch chocolate since 1863. Oh, of course. Yep. Hold on. The Droste effect. The Droste effect. It's Dutch. It's Dutch, so that's what I know. Known in art as an example of mise en abim is the effect of a picture reclusively appearing within itself. Oh. oh. I get it. Okay. So it's supposed to be like a book within a book? Yeah. Okay. So that's how she got to organizing the thing. Very nice. See, it's all coming together. Okay. She opened the book to the first page and read it. In it, she opened the book to the first page and read it. In it, she opened the first oh book to the first page and read it. In it, she opened the book to the first page and read it. In it, she opened the book to the first page and read it. In it, she opened the book to the first page and read it. In it, she opened the book to the first page and read it. In it, she opened the book to the first page and read it. In it, she opened the book to the first page and read it. In it, she opened the book to the first page and read it. In it, she opened the book to the first page and read it. In it, she opened the book to the first page and read it. In it, she opened the book to the first page and read it. In it, she opened the book to the first page and read it. In it, she opened the book to the first page and read it. In it, she opened the book to the first page and read it. In it, she opened the book to the first page and read it. In it, she opened the book to the first page and read it. In it, she opened the book Maybe they were finally going to step up their game and turn this into something genuinely hellish? One of the demons looked a touch annoyed, but mostly in control of himself. The other looked nervous, constantly shifting his weight and glancing around at nothing in particular. The in-control demon cleared his throat. <clears throat> I'm Screwshot. This is Worm Winnie. Uh, hello. Sorry, there's a fly. and He's annoying. Oh, kill it. Nah, I'm not going to kill a fly. Murder it. That would be murder, and I would be placed under Slaughter arrest. Slaughter it. Violent? Are, are, are you just getting in character, or is this who you are now? Rip off its head. I can't find out which part is the head. Twilight waved cautiously. What was this about? I'm Twilight. Twilight Sparkle. How are you enjoying your stay in hell? That was a question Twilight never thought she'd hear. Hmm. 
She bounced around a few possible answers before settling on the truth to make things simple. It's not remotely like hell, she admitted. <laughs> I'm loving it. Her joy bubbled over and she grinned. I get to read every book possible. <laughs> Screwtrot nodded slowly. For a minute, he said in a low, angry voice. Messed up again. I received a soul and a hell to put them in, protested Wormwinnie. I just did what I was told. It's not my fault. Maybe not, but <clears throat> you should check that your soul and your hell are properly suited for each other. Screwtrot tapped the floor once, twice. What was the identifier of this specific hell? Worm Winnie said something that was a that was less a sound and more a torrent of pure sensation, ranging from gentle touches to burning cold to the loudest whispers Twilight had ever heard to the weak lemonade taste after the ice in it has melted. All right, let's with you. Let's hear it. Um, um, let's go, baby. Okay, okay, okay. Um, sensation ranging, gentle touch, and lemonade. Um, okay, okay, okay. Yop. <laughs> hmm. Do you know who has the compendium of infernos? There's a copy in here. Twilight pointed. Go four miles and 3,758 feet that way. Take a left. Go 19 flights down the first set of stairs you find. Go a parsec to the right. That's a parsec exactly. And it'll be on the right edge of the 60 second shelf up. She has a system! Yeah. Screwtrot and Wormwinnie stared. I organized this according to a system. I know my system. <laughs> I didn't realize she was going to mention her system right after that. That's so funny. Protested Twilight. It's not that hard. See, you are looking for factual information, so I'll be right back. Screwtrot said quickly. He ran down the direction Twilight had pointed. He ran back a few seconds later, reading the book Twilight had mentioned and looking very, very angry. He showed his current page to Wormwinnie. Wormwinnie? Can you tell me what sort of pony is supposed to be here? Worm Winnie read a few lines and cringed. A green earth pony? Can you tell me what sort of pony Twilight Sparkle is? A purple alicorn? Can you tell me whether or not Twilight Sparkle is supposed to be here? No, she isn't. Like I said, you messed up again. I'll deal with you later. Scram. Worm Winnie vanished. Screwtrot rubbed his head. <sighs> that demon, he muttered. It's a wonder I haven't eaten him already. Um, Twilight cleared her throat. <clears throat> so, what about you were sent to the wrong personal hell, said Screwtrot, almost apologetically. This was meant to be for a slob committing the sin of sloth, not some pony who likes everything neat and orderly oh said twilight that explained a lot in fact screwtrot fanned through the book i don't think you're supposed to be in hell at all i can't <laughs> find an entry for you i don't think you're even supposed to be dead so does this mean i'm going back home but she didn't want to leave the library just yet there was so much to absolutely we don't know why you were sent to hell before you died, but rest assured, we ensure it never happens again. Hell apologizes for the inconvenience, and have a pleasant <laughs> day, ma'am. <laughs> hell apologizes for the inconvenience. Just sorry about our casual demon mistake. Before she could protest, Twilight vanished from the library and reappeared at the dining room table, where Starlight and Spike were discussing a changeling rally in Canterlot. Exactly what they'd been discussing when she'd died. The oh, so of things... that's what happened to her when she got stabbed by the fork that one time. You remember that? Oh, yeah. This is her side of the... Imagine. That would be funny. But Spike wasn't there yet. So. Oh, yeah, true. That's so funny. It's the same three characters, too. Yeah. <laughs> From the sounds of things, she could get right back to life, as if none of it had ever happened. But Twilight thought about the infinite library in hell, and Twilight thought about her own minuscule library here. Tears began welling in her eyes. Uh, Twy? asked Spike. You look real weird all of a sudden. I, I was in hell. 
I had access to every book possible. Twilight wailed and planted her face in her salad. I believe it's pronounced salad. Two fresh salads. This is hip. Down in hell. Although that particular clerical error had been sorted out, that still left the matter of how Twilight had died in the first place and gotten placed in this particular hell. And there was one option that Screwtrot was p particularly keen on. He reached through time and space and possibility and yanked Discord into the library by his antler. Discord, as usual, wasn't too put out. Well, hello, Mr. Trot. Wait, he already did that voice. I don't care. Well, hello, Mr. Trot, he beamed. Long time no see. Still heading down the lower arcy. You should come visit Equestria. The weather's scheduled to be quite lovely this time of year. A pony ended up in the wrong hell, rumbled Screwtrot. In fact, they weren't supposed to go to hell at all. Are you responsible? I did her a favor, really. She got to spend so much time organizing books with no disruptions. Just because I find order dull doesn't mean... Bad draconic quiz yelled Screwtrot. He squirted, he squirted Discord with an acid <laughs> spray bottle. Bad. You're not supposed to interfere with the afterlife. I resent that, protested Discord, flailing his arms to protect himself from the acid. After all, it would get him wet. <laughs> the author had a plot bunny they needed to get rid of. I did them a favor, too. And you know how hard it is for me to do favors. He scraped a drop of acid from his fur, licked it, and cringed. Oh, please, sulfuric. Still? You really need to switch to fluoro anti fluoro antimonic fluoro antimonic I got it, I got it. Good job, man. Too much work. So you say. Discord wriggled out of Screw Trot's grasp. Anyway, I shouldn't keep you any longer. Not with all the work you have waiting on you. Toodles! And he was gone. Screwtrot sighed, and there wasn't anything he could do about it. He did need to get back to work. Another day, another damnation. The, the end. end. My oh my. Yeah, that was these, a fun one. These stories fit better together than I was expecting. Yeah. They felt like uh, similar comedy styles. Yeah. Good job, you two. And more specifically, because that's the one we just read, good job, la Rambling Rider. Ah, uh, that was nice. That was nice. A nice, wholesome story about hell. Ah, uh, that's what I like. Now, Love if you were that in that library, thing. what would you look for? Oh, man, how to get better at reading, dude. <laughs> my, I just I can't read, man. I can't read for the life of me. Uh, we've all been there. 73 episodes in. <laughs> I was going to say, I wonder, that had every book that ever was, so I'd have to wonder how many works from, like, dead philosophers uh, that never got read would be in there. Oh, man. Dead historians. Not historians, historical figures. Yeah. Wow. Like, may maybe you could find a secret special book from The Hobbit that um, J.R.R. Tolkien never released. Imagine oh, there all are that probably cool tons stuff. of those. Would there be? I don't know. I would hope. That'd be so cool if uh, in like 10 years from now we found a J.R.R. Tolkien novel that never got released. Ooh, or maybe there could be, there in the library there would be like um, a version of the Silmarillion that was actually completed before he died. Oh, I have not heard of the Silmarillion, but I can kind of get what you're saying from context. Yeah, he died before he could complete. I think that was him. There were a few books that he didn't complete before he died so his son picked up the pace but um yeah that's uh that's J.R.R. Tolkien for you famous author of best hell ever on filmfiction.net yep good job J.R.R. Tolkien gosh I would love to oh. be J.R.R. Tolkien right of my little pony fan fiction that would be weird that's what I would look for in hell <laughs> It's not every book that conceivably could be, was it? Was it just like it's every book? It's an bo infinite supply of books, oh, wait. so... Oh, no, that's right. They did say every book that never was. So, yeah, that is every possible book that ever could be. So you could find that. 
Oh, God. I wasn't even thinking about anything like that. A Complete Life and Times of Ross Pitt Shark Cutter by J.R.R. R. Tolkien. Oh, God. But you oh, have man. to find it. You can't just conjure it. Right. Imagine Twilight dies and then they let her be the uh, clerk for the Infinite Library from now on. She can guide you to find any book you want. I'm sure she would love that. And maybe that's in the sequel, <gasps> Heaven of a Hell. Wait, is that a thing? Yep. It's 16,000 words, though, so that'll have to be a two-parter oh! if we ever read that one. Three-parter, maybe. Oh, yeah. Man. We Hold should on, do that at do some, some point, quick though. Let me do quick maths here. Uh -huh, um, uh -huh, uh. Yeah, two or three-parter. So, yeah, can't wait to read that one, honestly, but we need to finish a few other stories before we could possibly think about getting to it, so. Yep. Who knows? Maybe we'll do that someday. This episode was pretty great, I gotta say. Yeah. So I will say... Honestly, I preferred it more than the last one. Yeah, the la I will say my the last one, I was off my game more. Yeah, me too. Like, kinda... We just got back from a two-year hiatus. Technically, I it was like three days, according to the lore for us, but for me, it was only <laughs> like three days, but like... You Give have no break. idea what being disintegrated from existence feels like. It does things to your mind. We were on hiatus. Give us a break. We're just yeah. on a break. See, so, yeah, I'm, I'm funny. You're so <laughs> funny. All and right. thankfully, uh, my uh, system didn't crash. So, everybody, thank you so much for listening. If you haven't already, go down in the description and give these two fan fictions a like. Because they were very good and are deserving of it. And if we hit 1,000 likes, then we will make the next episode um, Heaven of a Hell or whatever they said that one was. We'll do that one immediately in one take. Oh, baby. Let's go. But we won't hit that many likes, so... See, that's the, that's the beauty of it. You say yeah. an absurd amount of likes, and then you never have to do the thing. You know what? Yeah. You're right. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. <clears throat> Oof, how do I normally start these? Okay. What is up, everybody? Oh, my God.